Film before film. What really happened between the images? For a number of years now, I've been studying the prehistory of film alongside my own film work. Film is the end product of many innovations which, in their earlier stages, were associated with the mysterious arts of magic and alchemy. Film is an artificial representation of life, a series of optical illusions relating to space and movement. It is a long road that leads from the camera obscura to the modern movie camera which was used to make this film and from the Latana Magica to the projection of stills and moving images right up to the cinema projection we know so well today. Countless inventions along with optical toys are the forerunners of our modern film language. Here, I'll briefly point out a few of the most important developments which will be demonstrated in this film. Fundamental to the development of film was the recognition of the fact that the eye, the human eye, is sluggish and that all visual perception involves the interpretation of images. This mechanical toy demonstrates how rapid movement turns colored dots into continuous lines. For me, it is the Thaumatrop, the magic disc of 1826, which was the most crucial development in the transmission of visual information. In rapid succession, it displays a unit of information, no information, a second unit of information, all of which are fused together in a particular mode of movement, merging together images with a maximum level of difference. Plateau's phenakistoscope of 1831 makes use of the minimum level of image difference. The no information stage, that means the gaps between the images, are compensated for by the distances between the slits. In 1834, Horner developed this disc into the drum-like zoetrope. In 1877, Renault, in developing his praxinoscope, increased the amounts of light available, dividing the stream of images by placing a series of mirrors at a specific angle to one another. Mari's chronophotography analyzes motion within a single image. The mutoscope, or the cinematographically shot images of the Kinora, make use of the principle employed in flipbooks. Film was born as soon as one was able to divide the streams of images for both shooting and projection. By combining the Laterna Magica with the forward loading mechanism, which both projects and conceals the transportation of the film, we already have the technology of modern cinema, the basic principles of what you are now watching. The camera obscura, the dark chamber having the size of a room, is the oldest forerunner of the camera. The Arabian scientist, Ibn al-Haytam, wrote about it as early as the year 1000. The light passes through a small hole and produces an upside-down image. Later, this principle is used for the pinhole camera. The smaller the aperture, the sharper the image. In 1568, the Venetian Daniele Barbaro is the first to fit a lens into the hole thus obtaining a much better image. 
In 1685, Johannes Sahn von Würzburg constructs the first mirror reflex camera obscura, which enabled the painter to see the world the right way up. Johann Heinrich Schulze discovered in 1727 the carrier of darkness. He blackened silver nitrate with sunlight. However, he could not yet fix the photographic image, the writing with light. It was not until 1826 that Nisiphor Nieps succeeded in producing a photographic image on an asphalt-coated tin plate with an exposure time of eight hours, the first photograph. The Camera Lucida, developed by Wollaston in 1806, facilitated the drawing of an image in daylight. The image is visible on the paper through the prism. The difference between an object and the way it can be shown is demonstrated by Dürer and Leonardo. Around 1660, van Hoogstraten applies the laws of perspective to paintings with his marvelous box of perspective. Anamorphoses for cone and cylinder mirrors have been painted since the 17th century. Various widescreen film techniques, for example cinemascope, have revived the anamorphic principle. The cylindric or the prismic lens distorts and shortens the image, which is widened and then transformed for projection. cylinder anamorphosis. The oldest form of artistic use of light is the shadow play. Its origin lies in magic religious concepts that are still evident in the performances with the Wai Yang Kulit figures from Java and Bali. A figure from the Greek shadow theatre 
heavily influenced by the Turkish Karagöz. In the 17th century, the Asian shadow play becomes known as Chinese shadows in Europe. The scissor cuts derive from it. They were also projected. Silhouettes were either black or white. The white shadows are cut out as negatives and become enlarged positives when projected. Shaped wooden heads, subversive toys reveal their owner's secret political attitude by means of their silhouettes. Hand shadows are still a popular game. In 1678, Van Hoogstraten ran his own shadow theatre. Specialising in shadow entertainments, the Théâtre Séraphin was one of the most popular theatres at the end of the 18th century. The shadow pantomime, the Magician Rotomago, was particularly successful because the figures were able to change their form quickly. Miniature mechanical shadow theatre scenes were also very popular. The living silhouette figure is animated by the movement of light because the shadow figure bends away from the screen. This is a very early shadow animation theatre and can be regarded as a forerunner of the cartoon film. Four different phases of movement are projected onto the painted screen. The Ombro Cinema, a shadow theatre of 1915, animates the shadows by concealing and revealing different phases of movement behind black bars. Giovanni da Fontana was the first to describe the magic lantern in 1420. However, it only became popular in the 17th century through the Dutchman Huygens and the Dane Wagenstein, who both travelled Europe with their slides. During the 19th century, the magic lantern was technically improved and was widely used for scientific purposes as well as for the entertainment of children.
Around 1720, Schubler describes a magic lantern that projected time into space. The dials of these clocks were projected onto the wall or the ceiling. The moving clockwork produces moving images. This way of projecting time could be regarded as the first moving film. Ever since the invention of the magic lantern, there was an urge to animate the static image. The simplest kind of movement was the slow movement across fixed images. Very simple but ingenious mechanisms were invented by Peter Muschenbroek around 1730. He moved various glass plates against one another. Child's chromatrope is a forerunner of the abstract film. As the camera obscura leads to film via photography, the Laterna Magica leads via projection to the episcope, to slide projection, finally film projection. The vast range for animating images anticipated most of the forms of filmic expression we know today. This scientific disk simulates the complicated planetary movements in the solar system. One of the simplest principles of transmitting light is to perforate the picture. A perforated print around 1700. This firmament with 32 perforated images was published in London in 1825.
The lithophane was created around 1800. The lithophane is a plate of unglazed porcelain with a relief that reveals lighter and darker lines or areas. A relief like etching in a shell from New Caledonia of 1882. When this Victorian cup is emptied, a woman's head appears at the bottom. A lamp with coloured lithophanes. Now we look in a mirror that only reveals its contents when lit from behind. The watermark is also related to the lithophane. The rubbing or warming of the hidden information could be compared to the process of developing a film, that is to make latent hidden images visible. Here, rubbing reveals the image. Many combinations are achieved by montage. Mystery paintings need water to make the latent colour visible. This bathing costume disappears in the water. The discovery of this Scotophorus, the carrier of darkness, by Johann Heinrich Schulze, was important for the development of photochemistry. These images are coated with phosphorus, the carrier of light. They store the light and shine in the dark. Here, the angle of light determines which visual information is reflected. To photograph literally means to write with light. This horse race is written with fire.
the warmth of the hand is supposed to reveal the erotic tension of the user. In 1864, Rausel presents his graphoscope for the enlargement of photographs. In the early days of photography, one was not able to enlarge photos, so mirrors were used. An early montage of portraits, smaller even than a human hand. Lord Charles Stanhope invented the technique of reducing photographs microscopically. These Stanhopes were used during the Siege of Paris in 1870-71 to as dispatches delivered by carrier pigeons. Later on, Stanhopes were hidden in various objects. An erotic photo concealed in the bottom of this Chinese brandy glass. When it is filled, the image emerges on the surface of the drink. The peep show has been developed from perspective boxes and miracle cabinets. In the 17th century, showmen begin to travel across Europe presenting spectacles with peep show and magic lantern. Whereas in the graphic art of the 17th century, the interest in perspective is still dominant, the 18th century displays a greater concern for light. The images are perforated so that light can pass through, then transparent images are placed over the holes. The Egyptian pyramids, the third wonder of the world. A daylight scene is transformed into a night scene. Rue de la Ferronnerie, 1745. The images were painted on the rear surfaces. Magnificent fireworks in honor of Joseph II. Nanhung, 1781, in China. St. George's Island, in Venice. The architecture of this palace is highlighted by perforation. the shipwreck. In 1807, Orme publishes the standard work on transparency, explaining how pictures can be made transparent by background painting and illumination. the same picture from behind. Spooner extends these techniques in his transparencies, protean views and transformations.
wherever you want to travel. To the firework display at Versailles, to the River Thames in London, to the beach in Dieppe, the Polyorama Panoptique by Le Maire, 1851, Christmas Eve in England. An excursion to London. Many panoramas are derived from the peep show. This panoramic roll of 1880 by Walker took Lauterberg's Eidofusikon as its model. background illumination also served to reveal the hidden information only to the initiated. The work of the magic lantern was later taken over by slide projectors. Eighteen twenty three Panorama of a round trip from Hamburg to Altena. The double length panorama by Zuhr was seven centimeters high and five meters long. With a view from the carriage, we begin our trip at the Milan Tour. We are now arriving at the Hamburger Berg, Hamburg's amusement park. Passing Showman Bolt's stand with a camera obscura. Passing the street ballad singers with their big placards.
Around 1700, Martin Engelbrecht from Augsburg constructs his Theatre of Perspective. He explores the sense of depth within the spatial dimensions of an image. Segments of the image are switched at various distances in the peak box. This way of experiencing the spatial dimension was also adapted by the folding panorama. This folding panorama from Naples offers three different views. Seventeen eighty nine, the world of tomorrow, New York. 2 Palais et le Pont Alexandre le 3e. the Victorian peep egg, made of alabaster showing the Thames Tunnel. Semi-circular settings lit from the back. pop-up books. Metal relief print from Greece. Relief print as a postcard. In a picture book. As a map of the moon. As a three-dimensional card with finger movements. The mine in Falun, Sweden, as a perforated book. Here, the positions of the fingers amplify the sense of space.
the card as a mask. The concave mirror creates the effect of suspending the object in mid-air. In 1838, Wheatstone invented the mirror stereoscope. In 1849, Brewster the lens stereoscope. Both systems separate what the left and the right eye see into slightly differing images, which are then fused to form a spatial impression in the mind of the observer. parallax stereoscopic image with its angles of vision. Hand-coloured stereo daguerreotype around 1850. stereoscopic images in various forms. stereoscopic image illuminated from behind. A stereoscopic folding postcard with twin eyepieces. A rare early example of a thaumotropic and stereoscopic drawing. These tennis rackets are in different positions. The stereo thaumotrope transforms an apple and an orange into one body. A medical measuring instrument for binocular vision. The analglyphic procedure allocates the colours red-green or red-blue to the eyes. Three D glasses with filters for analglyphs and for polarised images. holographic image which can be perceived spatially without glasses. Today, moving holograms are still filmic simulations. It will be some time before we can master the technical difficulties involved. We are still awaiting the birth of the holographic film. The magician Hotchkiss makes use of the eye's slowness in the same way that film does. He seems to be beheading the lady. In reality, the sword takes the long way round the circle. A demonstration of the after-image effect. 
The family has been staring at the red devil for a long while. Then they look at the white ceiling where they can see the devil as an afterimage in its complementary colour, green. We also can do this by gazing fixedly at the witch's wart without moving our eyes. Here we are staring at the points on the nose. A negative image of Greta Garbo now transformed into a positive image in our minds. Ptolemy was the first to observe the afterimage effect in the year 150 AD. This was forgotten. The effect was rediscovered by Darcy in 1750. He fastened a simmering piece of wood to a string and let it rotate at high speed in the dark. Instead of a point of light, he could see a glowing circle. The eye cannot follow the speed and therefore we experience film as a sequence of images that merge together and no longer appear as a series of single static images. The effect of fusion in a Victorian toy. In 1660, Newton studied the fusion of colours. He discovered that white light contains all the spectral colours and that the sum of the spectral colours becomes white when in fast rotation. The toupie chameleon, or stereograph. The phenomenon of the chameleon top was already described by l'abbé Nollet in 1765. When an object turns fast enough in front of our eyes, we ascribe a size and shape to it which it does not have. Bird, cage, bird in the cage. The thaumatrope was invented in England by Dr. John Ayrton Paris in 1826 the same year in which Niepce succeeded in fixing the first photographic image in the world. The thaumatrope, or miracle disc, shows two different images so fast that both images are fused in one. An important milestone in the development of film. two sets of half letters, which, added together, say, Hab mich lieb, love me. A Spanish thaumatrope to be shaken. Related to the thaumatropic principle is this form of transformation, which can be seen in these Chinese Netsika figures. In these Indian mica images,
and in this Dutch letter, one of the early newspapers. An old magic picture book. Double images. A striped pull out picture by Megendorfer. A postcard. pull-out postcard divided into strips, a folding card, pull-out card, hinge card, the thaumatropic puzzle, a pleasant scene which turns into disaster. This Greek magic picture book breaks up the images using a red filter. A translucent picture, lit up, painted on the rear side. Lens prism animation. Pull out magic lantern slides. The thaumatrope fuses different images with a maximum degree of difference. The thaumatrope, however, could transmit abrupt changes, but it was not able to show continuous movement. For this, one would have needed a greater number of images with a minimum degree of difference. Man has always tried to breathe life into dead matter. 100 years before Christ, Heron of Alexandria had already constructed his mechanical theatres with movable figures, fire, water, thunder, lightning and sea waves. This is a magnificent but relatively unknown forerunner of our robots as well as of our mechanical toys. Attempts to animate paper pictures date back to the 17th century. An English animated picture puzzle or ambiguous image. On the way to Monaco. On the way back from Monaco. Damian, a pull-out picture book. Lothar Megendorfer created the most diverse forms of picture animation virtually at the same time as the first films were being made. Occasionally, fine sand was used for animation. The Nuremberg Funnel.
the Strasbourg Cathedral as a revolving image. The fasciograph, animating by means of a little chain. The chain animation in a perforated picture book. The Greek shaking head on a spring. Spanish paper animation. Thanks to their sophisticated mechanisms, the magic lantern slides could project continuous images of movement. Projection of revolving image. A pull-out picture. A pull-out picture with moving eyes. Image set in motion with a lever. The kaleidoscope the producer of beautiful images, was invented in 1816 by the Scotsman David Brewster. The designoscope, two mirrors meet at an angle of 60 degrees as in the kaleidoscope and produce an infinite variety of patterns. A shadow theatre that produces abstract light effects. Polyomorphoscope. Only two examples are known to exist. The chromatic principle as a revolving postcard. The chromatrope, Henry Langdon Child's color wheel. Inspired by Faraday's wheel, Josef Plateau in Brussels and Simon Stampfer in Vienna invent the phenakistoscope independently of one another in 1832. Stampfer called it the stroboscope. In England, it was known as the phantoscope. This disc demonstrates continuous movement for the first time. Comparable to film because it uses minimal differences between the images to create the illusion of movement. In 1833, Horner invented the Dedoleum, later called the Zoetrope, or Wheel of Life. Here, the phases of movement are also seen in the form of an infinite loop through the slits. We see an image, then no image, and then a slightly different second image, producing the illusion of movement in the mind of the viewer. In 
In 1877, Emile Renault built his praxinoscope. We see the images in the mirrors. The function of the dark phase between the slits is taken over by the angle at which the mirrors are set up. Two years later, Renault presented the animation within a scene, which is in fact a mirror reflection. In 1880, he succeeded in presenting his loops with his praxinoscope for projection. From 1892 onwards, he publicly shows his continuous film loops in the Musée Grévin. A tabula scalata, dating from 1583. A secret portrait appears in a mirror when the latter is set up at a certain angle. These forerunners of montage and of hidden information are important for the potential forms of expression of the language of film. A Spanish triseniorama. Today's TV pictures, written in lines, can be associated with this. The Muriarama, the show of the ten thousands, invented in 1802 by Jean-Pierre Bray. A panorama in stripes which brings about new landscapes through the vertical montage of picture segments. If three billion people were to form a new combination every second, they would need more than 16 million years to find all of the possible combinations. Horizontal montage. upside down picture puzzles. The Incredible Upside Downs from a comic strip by Verbeek.
Montage picture puzzle postcards. Picture puzzles with holes. Picture puzzle heads like the paintings of Archimboldo. The writing forms the picture. Pointillistic eye test for colour perception. Silhouettoscope making the hair recognisable by a build-up of different silhouettes. An early example of multiple exposure. A very early Dutch transformation picture in stripes, dating from around 1700. A magic picture book, based on the principles of montage. There are various grids that produce movement. Expose the lady. living pictures. The Mormoscope, the mirror that animates the photograph. The painter, Lautenberg, is reputed to have created the first flip book or thumb cinema in 1760. Leafing through the book creates the illusion of movement. For Skladanowski, the German inventor of film, flip books shot with a movie camera were his main source of income. In 1898, the brothers Lumière 
built the Kinora three years after their first film shows. Mari elaborated chronophotography, which has inspired many artists, Hodler, for instance, to parallelism. In 1878, Mybridge succeeded in photographing individual movements in rapid succession with up to 30 cameras in series. He also projected them with his Zoopraxis scope, a combination of the Phenakistoscope and the Magic Lantern. Paris, 1895, the brothers Lumière give the first public movie show. One of the first German film projectors, Mesters Kinematograph. The combination of the transport mechanism with the magic lantern projects the 35 mm film. One of the first film posters. A dyed film. The virage is applied to create the impression of colour. Film projectors for children with paper films. with printed film loops. Pate Baby, the earliest home cinema using 9.5mm format. The first 16mm camera by Bolex, 1928.
film was not invented by any one individual. Alongside the many who haven't been mentioned in this film, perhaps we should remind ourselves of the important contributions Uchatius, Anschutz, Janssen, Edison, Dixon, Goodwin, Frieza Green, Demeny and Le Prince have also made to the development of film. <laughs>